Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. It's an early morning start this morning and today's a very busy day. Uh, it's about 6.30 and we've already been up working for a little while. I just thought I would take this opportunity before we start work properly just to show you what we're doing today. Today we're going to be shearing our sheep. We've got about, 100 and, about 105 woolly ones to shear today. Um, these are mostly merino with some merino cross uh, breads in here as well. Um, we're gradually moving away from the cross breads. Um, the, today is one of the few days of the year where we actually employ somebody on the farm. So we're employing a shearer. I don't do that myself. Um, I, uh, I don't do the shearing myself. I do all the wool handling. Um, and we've also got my brother coming up to help us out. So I'll just take you for a quick tour through the shed um, and I'll, uh, before we start, and uh, so these are our sheep yards here. Sheep come through this gate and down a bit of a ramp here. This pen here is the catching pen where the shearer grabs them from. <coughs> come on, Nipper. So we've got some swinging doors here that the shearer goes through to grab them. This is our shearing stand here. It's an old sunbeam. They're really common around this area. Further south they seem to have lister ones. Um, once the shearer has finished shearing, there's a door just here that the sheep go out. Um, we use these things which are wool brooms. They don't look much like a broom, but they're, they're what we use for sweeping the, the wool up. Um, so these, these are good for sweeping the wool, but not getting all the dirt and everything else with it. Um, you can also sweep the dirt along with these as well. Um, <coughs> once the shearer has shorn the sheep, I will pick up the fleece and throw it onto our wool table here. Um, we're then going to skirt the fleece, which means taking all the dirty bits off from around the outside. Uh, the dirty bits will go into one of these two wool bins here, and then the fleece wool will go either into one of these bays here, or straight into our old Ajax wool press. This is a hand-operated wool press, and they're, they're pretty slow presses, but we don't have that many bales to do, uh, so... I managed to just keep going with this. Um, the any hydraulic press, even a really, really old beaten up one, I have seen selling for six to eight thousand dollars at clearing sales. So I just can't afford that. So I will just keep going with the Ajax for a while longer. All right. Um, so we'll get back here when the shearer turns up, and we'll show you a bit more about how this all works. The first thing we need to do in the morning is to run some sheep down into the shearer's catching pen. Because the shearing shed has no mains power to it, next we need to start the generator. The shearer comes out and catches a sheep out of the catching pen. There's a special technique to this that makes it look much easier than it really is. The first bit to be shorn off the sheep is the belly, uh, it's already been taken off this one. Next they run up the back leg here uh, and uh, take that off and clean up around the tail. Now it's important to watch out where the wool from this back leg ends up because when we come to pick the fleece up after the sheep has been shorn we need to pick up this, the two back legs. This back leg always ends up underneath. Next, the top knot is taken off the head uh, and they run up the neck uh, and split the fleece open at the neck. 
Uh, then they just work around the sheep, taking the wool off. Um, there is a particular method, they always use the same, uh, same blows or the same, they put the cutter in the same position each time on each sheep um, and then the sheep ends up with its head pointing out the door ready to run out uh, to the, uh, the let out pens. From time to time the cutters and combs on the shearer's handpiece go blunt and need to be changed. The, cutter lasts, uh, the comb lasts about twice as long as the cutter. Uh, you'll see the shearer take his handpiece off and here he is just slotting in a new cutter quickly, giving it a quick dose of oil before he gets going again. That's the comb and cutter, screwdriver and a handpiece.
Okay, so this is what a fleece looks like when it comes off the sheep. Uh, so to pick it up, we first need to find the back leg. Back leg is under here. The neck ends up tucked under here. So we want to lay the fleece out reasonably flat. We want to grab the two back legs, come together and bring it up and over. Keeping hold of the two back legs, we want to then be able to pick up the whole fleece. Now to throw it on the table, we want to keep hold of the back legs until the very end, but we want to try and roll it out so we get the neck that's tucked under down by my knees, right down the other end of the table. So I've still got hold of the two back legs here at the end of that. If we do it right, if the sheep have any, if the fleeces have any uh, dags on them, they will end up here between my hands, so it's very easy for me to just pick them out. Now we're going to go around and just skirt the rest of the fleece. These are the leggy bits. They get a lot of grass seeds and stuff in. We want to take them off. Um, and up here are the armpits. So we get black sweaty bits in them. Like this. So we want to just skirt down either side of the fleece quickly. We just want to take the smallest amount we can off. Some fleeces you need to skirt more heavily than others and certain parts of the fleece you need to skirt more heavily than other pieces. As we go, if we can just roll the fleece in, this allows us to see any, anything underneath it, like little skin pieces where the sheep have been nicked. Um, and any gra heavily grass seeded parts that we need to skirt off as well. Once we've got right round the fleece, we roll it up into a ball like this. And then we need to assess the quality of the wool. So we pull out a staple like this. We need to assess how strong it is. So we do this by holding it between two fingers, giving it a bit of a tug and a flick with our other finger. This is nice strong wool. The other thing we want to check is the length. So anything that's longer than across my hand is plenty long enough. Anything that's shorter than that, we're going to pull out. Um, the other thing we want to look at is how soft the wool is. If I just grab a little bit of the broader wool, you can see how coarse the crimps are on there compared to this staple here. These pieces are called a staple. So the finer the crimps are, the finer the each strand of wool. The coarser the crimps, the coarser the wool is going to be. So this one is good quality, this fleece is good quality wool. And it can go straight in the press.
So we're all done shearing now and we've got to finish pressing up. So far we've got a bale of good fleece wool, half a bale of uh, wieners which are young sheep, this is, they're bigger than lambs uh, but this is the first time they have been shorn. We separate their wool out because it's got a little bit more hair and stuff in it than, uh, large, than the older sheep. Then we have our cast fleeces in here. These are fleeces that have got something wrong with them. So if we come down to these, this first um, batch here, this is tender wool, what we call tender wool. And it just means that it breaks a bit easily. Um, it's not very strong. So if we pull it, we can break the staple in half pretty easily. We shouldn't be able to do that. So we pull these out because of that. These next ones are just a bit short, um, 
so if we hold them on our hand like that they're one finger shorter than the rest of them um, so we pull them out the each all wool is saleable and useful but each wool with different characteristics has a different use and a different process it goes through so the longer wool won't go through the same machine that the shorter wool is going through um, and then we have this here let me so if you look at the crimps on this this camera doesn't pick it up very well unfortunately but the crimp the wavy pattern in the wool is much coarser than in this other wool now this gives you some indication of the thickness of each fiber so this is really nice soft wool this is just a bit more prickly and a bit coarser wool so we've also uh, pulled this lot out now we're going to press all of this up into one bale this last bale is a bulk class bale so what we do is we write what we've put in it WNRS for wieners then we put some newspaper on top and the next lot of wool so each each type of wool is separated out by a layer of newspaper we also have the pile under the table now this is all the second cuts and the really short stuff so it's more fluff than anything um, we'll bale this up we'll put this in the in the bale very last it's also got some of the hocks and stuff like that um, that get swept up from around the sheep um, when they're being shorn we have our pieces in this bin here so this is all the stuff that we were skirting off from around the edge of the fleece and we have our belly wool in a pile over here this tends to be a bit shorter but it's also got a lot more grass seeds and stuff like that in it so that just gets processed a bit differently it's also a bit more um, matted um, felted cotted we call it um, so it just doesn't pull apart quite as easily um, so it just gets processed differently it's still good wool it's still saleable um, it can, and it still has a use well shearing's all done for another year um, it's great to get that out of the way uh, thanks very much to Arnie our shearer he did a really great job to Jess and my brother for helping out to Nipper for helping out uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you've learned a little bit and I hope to see you again next time Thanks. Bye.